Hi, my name is Chris Lake and you are in my studio here in London and uh, I am now a way to show you how I put together my new single coming out in February which is If You Knew featuring the Stala. Okay, so, um, so the project I've got up on the screen at the moment is um, my new single that's coming out in February called If You Knew featuring the vocals of Nastala. Now, um, this could be a complicated one to show to you because it's, it's kind of a complicated track, lots of automation going on, um, lots of fiddly, fiddly little parts, but I think it'll be quite interesting um, for you to see what's happening in this track because um, there's, not many, there's not many tunes out there that um, have a lot of musical things going on, chord progressions, you know, while the beat's um, playing, and this one does. Um, you know, whether it works or not, that's for you to decide, but I think it does. Did so, you start with the uh, chords, this track? Yeah, um, I, the, the whole, the initial concept of it was, um, it came from the music. So, um, you know, I put down a, like a rough beat, bass line, um, and uh, piano, uh, strings, and then tried to develop it from there and try and make it um, sound quite big. So. I'll play I'll play the uh, the record to start off with so Yeah, first off, I'll, uh, I'll show you the, um, the bass line. It's obviously probably the, uh, the main part for, uh, for most people um, in the clubs. So to make this sound, I used the, um, the new synth by um, F Expansion called Strobe. A really, really good synth. So uh, when it comes out, I really highly recommend uh, anyone to, uh, to snag a copy. No, it's just um, it's just a fresh, um, a fresh sound. Um, it's just basically all it is is a, a saw wave with um, a touch of noise. If you put the, I find if you put noise um, 
moist together with a saw wave, it gives it a little bit of dirt and grit, and it, it reacts nicely when you uh, when you put a filter on it. So this sound has um, a slight um, filter envelope on it. Uh, let me show you. You can actually see the way that the um, the way here on the screen that, that the filters uh, react. So if I open up the sound on the cutoff. And um, what I mean by having the noise in there, it just, it just gives it a nice, nice bit of bite in the club. If, if I take the noise off there, no, my like will probably sound no different. But, um, no, it's cool. It's not nice, but it's just you know, this um, having that little bit of noise in there gives it a bit of dirt. So then, um, from that, I've just got two parts of processing. I've got the, uh, the EQ, which I've, lo um, I've rolled off the, the very, very, very low frequencies. Just the, the pretty much inaudible, and um, so that it doesn't muddle up the track. Um, a slight boost uh, at 6,000 hertz, and then, um, and lastly. The dance music um, favourite, side chain and compression. Everyone has to have a bit of side chain and compression now. So um, you choose to EQ before the compressor every time, or yeah, I mean, because you know this this is um, this compressor's for uh, it's for effect. It's not for it's not really for altering the the shape of the sound. So um, the, the, you know, I'm just trying to. Um, duck the sound uh, once it's all been processed and the reason I'm ducking the sound um, is it, this isn't really you know the reason I'm ducking this bass line isn't isn't so much so that um, you know it's really obvious like a big slide against the kick it's just so that nothing's uh, just so the kick can come through really loud and um, and gives it a little bit of space so that the idea is you shouldn't really hear the uh, the side chain um, on the bass line so that much different without it but I find it I find it's quite a good thing to use as well because um, it allows you to bring the bass line up um, a little bit louder when the kick's not playing just get you know drives things forward a little bit more in the clubs. So the drum processing, um, I've got I've got all the drums going um, together into a bus. Which bus I've got to figure out just now. Basically this bus compressor is similar to um, um, the bus compressor that you can get from Waves, uh, the SSL bus comp. So just it's just a, a compressor with very very short um, attack and short release and high ratio, and then a bit of makeup and um, it gives it a bit more of a snappier sound. I think I've actually busted this a couple of times. Let me just check. And your drums go up from loops. A lot of um, one hits and loops. Some vengeance in there, maybe. I've got absolutely no. I don't don't think so. Most of this looks like um, one hits or parts that I built up. Okay. The cushion's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It, congas, you know, congas can take a, a good while. I think I think the congas I took a, a couple of hits. <coughs> excuse me. A couple of hits from various. Um, just little hits from various loops uh, to build up a sound. I think look, I've got two conga sounds here. And, uh, a clap. The, clap. the clap's built up with a, a few sounds. Yeah. Yeah, what am I solo now? Yeah, this is the drums here.
A lot of these sounds I bounce down to audio, so... Um... Again, shaker. Um... Quite a lot of reverb on that one. Yeah, um, that, that would have been um, before I, I rendered it. Um, and then again, sidechain compression just to make it pump with the um, pump with the rhythm. Um, conga. That is a loop, that one. But I've got an effect on this. Have you seen this plugin? Ace, such a good plugin. Um, so it's just doing a lot. Of, um, I'm not sure if. Uh, anybody has seen this before but this is a plug in which you can um, this is like a timeline for the loop and then uh, and then you can select the different times when um, when an effect comes in for example th these blocks here is when the reverbs turned on and down here are the reverb settings so I've got little hits of reverb on there but without it it's like mm. just without it and then with it it's got Makes it sound a little bit bigger and housier and classic, and, and then this, the the yeah, I've got this this little reversal. Without it, it, just sounds like this. Maybe I'll reverse that in the audio, but anyway. Um, and I put this stutter effect in to, to take a little bit of the the bite off the um, this first hit here. It's a cool thing, but you know, you can do so much with it if I add this in. damn good if you you know obviously you know depending on what style of music you're doing I mean in this sort of track you don't um, you, I don't think it's right to to go crazy on loads of stutters and effects because it takes away from the music you, you want um, um, with this I went to go for a kind of like a, a, a quite classic-y understated rhythm because uh, if you go if you make something that's too um, techy too prominent with the rhythm you you end up um, taken away from the music, like if, you know, if the drum hits are taken, I've got too much tone in them. If they sound like a note, it's going to clash with the chords and that. So that's why I've, that's why I've gone for something quite simple, just hats, nice clap, conga. You know, it's just um, it just works. So. Is there any more processing tips? You know, processing what you, tips. What you usually use to get get your sound. Yeah, I, I just like it's nice to it's, it's nice to compress the uh, the rhythms down, um, keep them all tight. So you usually group everything up. At the yeah, end group 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 the drums. Um, it, it makes it a little bit more it makes it a little bit more easy. I've got I've got to admit, with this record, I spent far much longer than I normally would do on this tune because um, I wanted to get it right. And, and what I was saying earlier about um, uh, making sure that the rhythm is isn't too techy and um, doesn't you know the the, note, the the parts of the rhythm don't have too much tone in them? It was really difficult to get that mixture for the rhythm right so that it didn't clash with the tune, and um, that's what ended up taking a long time. And I've got some crazy rootings going on. Um, I think I've got about three different drum buses going on into the same drum bus. And honest, I don't even feel like I should show you because it's so pointless why I've done it, and I just haven't undone it. You know, um, the main the main the main point of it is stick all of your drums into one drum bus. And and compress it with really tight, um, fast attack, and fast um, fast release, high threshold, just to give uh, give the rhythm a bit of bite. So what did you use before the F expansion one? The um, I've used I've used the um, the Waves SSL stuff, um, but I ended up I ended up selling that. I wasn't using it that much. So. Um, well, there's so there's other compressors you can use. You can you can you can use the you can use the comp yeah you can use the compressor in um, in Logic as well. Actually, there's there's um there's processing in this is um, pretty good. Some of the compressors are really good in the liquid mix. 
you just have to experiment because obviously the different ones react in different ways and sound different. So, um, so that's most of the rhythm here. Over and above the beat and the bass line. <laughs> that I haven't actually bust. But then obviously the main thing is the piano. So I'll let you hear the main uh, riff. What I've got is a piano sample. Um, uh, I'm not telling you which one, because that'll give the game away. But uh, which I've just played in the keyboard. And um, actually I might even have it here. Oh, so it's a, a multi-sample. It's a multi-sample. It's not. It's not like I haven't sampled it from another record. Okay. Yeah, so I've got the sample. Um, the samples loaded into the ESX24. So obviously I've got a full um, range here. And then um, on top. Wash with loads of delay. Yeah, I just got a lot, lots of delay on it. Which is, um, so is this the same piano sound from Changes? It is exactly, it's signature. exactly, it's, it's my signature one. And I've, um, I just like the sound of it. It sits so well in, in, um, in club tracks, so it's kind of like... You know, it's just, um, it's got a nice sound to it. So we've got a delay on it, a um, bit of EQ. So this is, uh, without it, it sounds... I can't even remember the notes that I played on this record. So. Something like that. Um, it's strange how it sounds less like a piano when you solo it, but in the mix. Yeah, 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 definitely. So um, with this record, though, I've backed up uh, in changes. Um, in changes, it was just like. Um, I only had the piano, so it's like, um... Uh. Oops. And that was all that was playing in there. Um, but with this, I've backed it up with strings here, like, um... Yeah, the, the, all, the, all there is is the um, the low pass filter on there. Yeah, I'll show you here. I, I rendered the, the main part to audio, so I've got the just like that. So it works quite nicely. The, the, what I did was um, to try and I, I wanted to have a, a difference between um, the verses and the chorus. I wanted the verses to sound quite um, like sp open and a, a lot of room there, kind of uh, like deep and, and dreamy, and then the, the the chorus to open out be quite sort of intense and um, yeah. I, I'm a bit of a sucker for dance music where it kind of makes you want to go like this. So uh, that's kind of like the, the idea with the record. Um, open, out, open out the pianos, um, build up the, the strings, and, uh, and obviously the, uh, the beautiful vocals of Nastala. So um, let me play the strings. The strings are made with um, the, it was just a stock 
ESX24 um, string part. Uh, strings are here. Again, is that the filter automation? Yep, I'll show you that now. Yeah, I've taken off a little bit of, um, I'll show you now. Taken off the extreme high end. And dipped it around here. So that works quite well, well against the piano, um, you know. Are you busting everything to one side chain, or you got separate side chains? Let me have a look on this one. I think on this, I might be side chaining it independently. No, um, this is bust. Um, this is bust to. Uh... No, sorry, I did side chain this. Yeah, I'm side chaining it independently. And do you generally use the same attack and release times on side chains? Yeah, mostly. I've got like an, I've got a, I've, I've saved a, um, a side chain preset, and then, and then what you can adjust is, uh, is the the release time. And the release time is quite important if you want to. Um, you just have to play around with things. I mean, you can. It depends if you want if you want the side chain to be really obvious. If you want the side chain to be really obvious like this. You know, have quite a high ratio, a good bit of comp comp compression like that. I'm, I'm just trying to go for something that's not totally, totally obvious. Um, and if you, and if um, adjusting the release time, you just want to try and get it quite even so that it's, it's all it's all musical. So. Um, how do I describe it? So it's sucking back in time. Yeah, in time, yeah, in time of the music. Because if you go too early, dun 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 dun. It's like if you go like it's like dun 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 dun. It's all in time. It's just so, that's what well, that's the effect that I'm going for. So. You know, um, playing around with the settings on, on the side chain is quite important, I think, to, to get a really good sound on your record. Um, so on top of that, so you've got the, you know, the strings, the, um, the piano, the rhythm, and then, of course, the most important bit is the vocal. But unfortunately, it's the hardest bit as well. Um, all recorded here with the... All recorded... Uh, no, I, uh, half of it was recorded here, half of it was recorded in Scotland. Um, before I moved, we recorded the verses. Uh, this, this is like I'm saying. I'm really sorry that I'm showing you such a, um, a terribly put together project. I'll, I'll be showing you another one in a minute. But um, yeah, you know, I think it's, I think it's good to see how these sort of records are, are made. Uh, this is the vocal here. Write a history. I know you're listening. It's time we all stand up. So these are these are all the effects on it. I've got um, I've got an Oxford um, Oxford Sony Oxford Dynamics on it, um, and then a bit of EQ knocking off the the low end, just like the rumble from the mic and things like that. Um, slight side chaining again, just to make just to make it fit in this record because there's so much going on um, and. Another EQ, probably pointless to show. A little bit of chorus, just to um, uh, thicken the vocal up a little bit. It's probably like a, it's, you probably can't really hear it that much. Um, and then obviously the effect that you're really hearing heavily is the um, the tape delay. So that all comes together like this. Write a history, I know you're listening. It's time we all stand up I know the recipe If chance is all we got Then we must have a lot Don't stand behind the line To 
stop us to decline. It's quite embarrassing, actually. It's the first time I've heard those clicks. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the automation here. I'm just trying to take out some um, uh, some of the nasty sort of peaks peaks in the vocal that were standing out in the record. Once I was uh, once I got to the final stages of mixing down this track, um, there, were, there were certain phrases, words, or even syllables, you know, um, syllables that were popping out of the record too much. So, um, for example, here the first the first word of the vocal wasn't coming in very loud. So um, I just boosted the volume of this to compensate. And then, uh, and then if I zoom in here, this part of the vocal, I think it's um, this. I just, I just dip down the, the volume so that it doesn't pop out and, um, and deafen everyone. Write a history. I know you're listening. It's time we all stand up. I know the recipe. You, you work like that rather than DSing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really that great with a DSer. I just sometimes, if it's, if it's standing out that much, I'll just go and do it myself. So, um, but yeah, I know a lot of people have a lot of success with DSers. So. And you don't. Um... There's no reverb on there, it's just a tape no, delay. No, just a tape delay. I think, um, so you're sort of emulating the reverb with tape? Yeah, I, I just... It's like reverb, pretty sharp. Yeah, I just... I, sometimes, sometimes I don't feel the need to, to add the reverb in it. It's just kind of... Um, I quite like having quite a, a kind of upfront recorded vocal and not washing it out too much. So it's just, just a style I go for, but I know a lot of people use reverb to, you know, to great success. I'm just not one of them, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's the. Uh... I a history. I know you're listening. It's time we all stand up. I know the recipe. The chance is all we got. So as you can hear, there's not really. I mean, there may look like there's a lot going on here, but. Tracks-wise and, and, and important musical parts-wise, there's really not that much going on. Um, it's just trying to get a lot of this work is just trying to get these sounds working together and, and, and gelling and, and, and making a musical piece. So, and, and I think it works. So, um, what's that like chip tuny kind of sound? Yes, I was going to mention that. It's like a it's a stab from. Um, I'm trying to think what I made it with. This one here. I think I made that with the um, FM8. Very, 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 very cool synth. I'm going to show you that, um, a lot of how I use that FM8 on the, the next record. Um, so just on this, I added um, again side chain. I sound like a broken record here, but. Also, um, some tape delay. And then, uh, and lastly, there's a, a bus going to um, this arts acoustic um, reverb. So is that Which the, is a big, is that the big only thing going to that bus, or is that? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing going to that bus, and um, it's a huge reverb. yeah, big, big reverb. That's what gives. So if I mute that, the stab sounds like this. So. Quite a big effect, really. So, did you just catch me picking my yeah, nose? Yeah, 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 Great yeah, yeah. shot that was. <laughs> Great. What have you got in your master bus? Master bus. Show you. And do you, do you work with it on all the time, or is it something you've got in your hand? It really depends. It depends, um, depends what sound I'm going for. I just go through different spells. But on this one, I've, I've, I've EQ'd the master track channel. Let me just um, get everything playing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So just take a, um, I got a little tip off, um, off a guy, uh, off a master and engineer in, um, in London. He, uh, he advised me that it was pretty good, in, well, in my mixes, that I, they were quite heavy between 100 and 200 hertz. So if I, if I took a little dip, um, it gave him, gave him a lot more um, room. And I've started doing it and it makes a hell of a difference to my um, records. And then I've just boosted a bit on the, uh, on the higher frequencies. <laughs> It just gives it a little bit more sort of presence, so just it sounds nice. Then, um, then a compressor um, by Synoxis. Um, Do you generally go for that compressor? I have phases, so this is just I just chose this one, it seemed to work. Um, and then, um and then the Sony Oxford limiter. Just, just kind of like, just dabbing on and taking, uh, taking out some of the nasty peaks out of the record. It's a bit brutal, really, but it, it, it seems to work, so. Um, that's my master. And your master faders on it, just on zero? Yeah, I just keep out on zero. I just, just kind of like, um, always try to keep it like that, so. Um, so yeah, I mean, one of, one of the only, one of the other big problems I had was because this is a vocal record, um, you have to be very careful of how you mix the record so that you can leave some room for the vocal to breathe. Especially with the piano. Oh man, it's just a nightmare because, like, like I was trying to explain to you about the um, the effect that I wanted to go for when the chorus comes in. Uh, to achieve that. You know, most of the time it just means all of the sounds opening up at once. So to do that, obviously the the sounds are going to be louder. It all comes together and it ends up being a big mess. So I had to kind of pull back some of the parts and um, automate them so that to give uh, you know to give the vocals room. And the vocals are sitting very very loud in this in this part of the track right here. <laughs> So we just took one of the takes, um, sorry, one of the takes that Nostala did, and um, uh, and just pitched it up one full one full tone and added it in as a um, as a layer. Did I? You can't, you can't hear it until it's solo. No, no. I, honest. The weird, the weird thing is the part when you actually listen to the parts, it sounds quite weird. The vocal on its own in the chorus. Um, yeah. And if you knew the things I see, would you give in and let it be? You know, quite alternative harmonies, but when you put it in, it doesn't really sound like that at all. I suppose that's the key, what it sounds like when the uh, record's playing, so. So, yeah. But uh, one, one thing that will be interesting to you is, um, I can play you the like um, the first idea I ever had for this record, and it sounds properly shit in comparison. So, um, piano. I wrote this ages ago. So that's. Uh, I just put down a demo in like um, you know an hour or so, and, and this is this is what I wanted to develop into a full track. So Chance 
like night and day, really. But um, you know, that's that's sort of how I um, what I took it from to to there. It's like a a, a final track to release. So. Well, I think what's really important is getting a you know getting this uh, getting that bass line to work. So. I mean, there's been a few tracks that I've used this style of bass line. Um, Do you generally play the bass or program it? Yeah, I play the bass. Yeah. I mean, you've got... Um... I think one thing that's really important is... You know, it, it, I think it's good to just try and... When I'm playing with the... Playing against the beat. Sorry. I, I just like I'll end up just going and playing just a load of um, riffs, you know, into into the sequencer, and then I'll. Um, Open it up in the piano roll, and uh, you know, just pick pick the best bits, and you know, loop it, and then, and then after that, when I'm when I'm working on the rhythm, I think what's really really important is the is the length of your notes. If if you if you want to have a lot of um, impacts with your uh, um, with your projects, for example. So this is a remix I'm working on at the moment. But this style of bass, um, this style of uh, Bass line, what's really key is like the length of your notes. And I'll show you what I mean. Obviously, if you take you know take the bass line out there, just the... you know the rhythm's quite simple, and I, I just wanted to get something that's quite tough and um, and skippy with the bass line. So, hang on, something's wrong here. What I was saying about the note lengths is um, how much the feel for the record can change if you change the length of the notes. And that's just too much and you lose the groove of it. Or you can go too. You know, it's too short and you lose the feel. I'll show, I'll show you how I do that bass line. I think I made this in... Um, made this in the mini MOOC. So I just got... Um, yeah, simple tone like that. Again, with a little bit of noise. Without the noise. With the noise. Just filthy. Yeah. So, um, and then I add a bit of a glide onto the, the note, you know, the portamento, whatever, whatever synth you've got, it's gonna have a different name for copyright reasons or whatever. Um, then add. add these high notes in to um, get it to slide. It makes it wobble. And if I take that note out, 
So just go up and then down. So like this, it makes it wobble. Just things like that, so. Um, that's why I think it's important to get the, uh, the note lens on your, uh, on your bass lines right. I think it makes a, um, a key part to your, uh, you know, to your sound, to your grooves.